We are the church who is living always in the third hour. So today we are celebrating the Feast of Pentecost, the descent the descend of the Holy Spirit on the disciples and on the whole church in the third hour. And since then, the church is always living with this third hour. So what does it mean that we are living always in the third hour? We heard it today in the Pauline epistle, St. Paul was telling us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 2 that no one can profess Jesus as Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Every time you sign yourself with the sign of the cross, you profess Jesus as Lord and you profess that the Holy Spirit is working in you and you believe in him and you received him in the very first moment when you came to the church and got baptized and received the gift of the Holy Spirit. But there is something more than that. The sacramental life of the church, all the sacraments of the church, confession, baptism, chrismation, Eucharist, marriage, or whatever it is, is showing us once more that we are living in the third hour. Let me share with you a few facts, and then we can connect these facts together. The Lord was risen on Easter Sunday. From Easter Sunday, Till his ascension, the disciples did not preach a single word to anyone. The disciples never ever did one liturgy. And even till the day of Pentecost, they were gathered together with one accord, as we heard today in the book of Acts, chapter 2, but never ever celebrated any sacraments, either for themselves or for any of the congregation. Why? Jesus died, Jesus is risen. Jesus, Jesus instituted the Eucharist before his crucifixion. Why he didn't preach it? Why he didn't practice? Because we were waiting for the Holy Spirit. And since the first day of the church, we saw how Peter was preaching, people were convicted, and he started, they started to say, what we can do? He told them, repent, get baptized to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So how we can connect these events with our daily life. Since the day of Pentecost, the church is celebrating the Eucharist. First it was only on Sunday, and then now we have it nearly every day. What does it mean? We are enjoying the third hour. When the Holy Spirit descended upon the church, he conveyed the whole life of Christ to the whole church. Before that, Peter saw everything. Then did the three years of ministry of the Lord. He saw the miracles. He saw the transfiguration. He was an eyewitness and attending the Eucharist, eyewitness on the Good Friday, all the events before his eyes. But as we shared maybe last week, at the very end of the 40 days, he said, let us go and fish. Why? Where is your mission? All what I have seen was true 100% but not conveyed into my life yet. He didn't express it at the time. The Holy Spirit didn't come yet, but now we understood it. The Holy Spirit was not there yet. That's why we heard it today. In the last two verses we read in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 16, and verse 14 and 16. The Lord was telling us, He will glorify me. How? for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. So he's telling me every single time you come to church to live the sacramental life of the church, you are experiencing the third hour. The Holy Spirit conveyed the life of Christ to each and every one of us. We'll hear it in a few minutes in the liturgy. <clears throat> when we ask the Holy Spirit to descend upon us and upon these gifts, the, the bread and wine, to convert us into the holy ones and then to convert the bread and wine into the holy, the real precious body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. So every time you come to church, every time you sign yourself with the sign of the cross, you are reliving the third hour, the Holy Spirit making me to profess Jesus as Lord and making me to live 
the whole life of Christ. On a daily basis, the church also is telling us we live in the third hour. The morning we celebrate his resurrection to not only to feel, but to allow the Holy Spirit to pour out the power of his resurrection in my life. I can't get it by myself. That's why he is saying, telling us, he will glorify me. He will take what is mine and declare it to you. In the third hour, we celebrate once more the descent of the Holy Spirit. Six hour, he is bringing the whole power of his crucifixion to be mine. And so on, the, the whole prayers in our Agbeya, we are reliving the whole life of Christ through the work of the Holy Spirit who is conveying each and every part of it to be mine. That's why when St. Paul was saying us, I was crucified with Christ, we can ask him easily, you were not there. You never saw the Lord in the flesh. He said, yes, but since I was baptized, the Holy Spirit conveyed to me all the life of, the whole life of Christ. That's why St. John Chrysostom is telling us, in the day you came to church to be baptized, you call it your own personal Pentecost. The day that you started your third hour to enjoy the whole life of Christ day and night. That's why we are not commemorating any event in the life of Christ. We are reliving the whole life of Christ. St. Paul is encouraging us in 2 Corinthians 4.10, and he repeats nearly the same words in 4.11, that the life of Christ may be manifested in your own mortal bodies. I'm not living my life anymore because I'm living in the third hour. If we have this belief and we have this power of the, oh, the treasury of all goodness, can we miss anything in this life? Can we see that sin still attracted to us if we have the treasury of all goodness? Yes, we still living in this weak flesh, but when we focus on our weakness, we always fall. But when you focus on him, the treasury of all goodness who is in you, in me, then we will live a different realm of life. Church is celebrating this feast once a year to tell us it's the life of the church. All and every prayer in the church is in the third hour. Why? Because we are in the presence of the Holy Spirit who fills everywhere and fills everyone. Let us focus on this coming few minutes that we are not left alone. He was telling them, I am leaving, and they will have such sorrow. In verse 7, in chapter 16, he was telling them, it's for your own advantage I will go to send the Holy Spirit to convey all my life to you. The last verse we read today in the Gospel of St. John, all things the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. He's telling us, now I'm inviting you all to a divine life, to live a life in which you are the indwelling place of God the Holy Spirit, who sanctifies you, sanctifies every one of us to be a real temple for God. May the glory of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. The Spirit of comfort